Welcome to The Bracket, episode 29. We have a reduced crew today as KB and Nick are out doing Rediscovering America, right? Where are they? Mm-hmm. Uh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, Rust Belt, something like that. So today, Ish. yeah, somewhere in the Rust Belt. I think we're, in, we're on the right track. So today we have uh, the regulars, me, Coley, Che, and Owen. And we're adding in Rudy because today we are doing a cool bracket. We're doing a bracket of cool, and we narrowed it down. There's... We narrowed it down to basically cool moves and cool objects. We excluded cool people, which is maybe a little discriminatory, but still we had to because like that would have run the bracket probably if we're if we're really that's its own it. bracket. Yeah, mm-hmm. that should be its own thing. So maybe we'll do that at a different time. Um, but for now, we do have a really good one lined up for you. But before we talk to you about it, we're going to talk about Roman. All right, let's talk about Roman. The folks over at Roman, which is an online men's health company, are changing the game with Roman Swipes, the secret to longer-lasting sex. Roman Swipes are a clinically proven way to last longer in bed. They're effective, easy to use, and fast-acting, but don't require a prescription, which is really nice. Roman can ship you swipes in discreet, unmarked packaging, and each Swipes packet is small enough to hide in your wallet for whenever you need it. They're super easy to use. Just take the swipes out of your packet, swipe them on, let it dry, and you're good to go. That's it. Go to GetRoman.com slash lights to get $10 off when you choose a monthly plan. Thanks to Roman. All right, we're going to get right into it. All of you guys got some pretty good lists, so this is going to be a fun one, I think. The the first matchup we have is the 12 seed versus the 5 seed. The 12 seed this time, and this is Cole. You submitted this very late, and I had to add it because it was so good and so correct. It was pulling a book that leads to a secret room. Ooh. <sighs> Wow, which is Damn. very cool. Arguably one of the coolest. Like when he said it, I was like, "This might need to be even higher because it's one of the coolest things I can imagine." Um, and that is going up against the five seed, which is from Che, which is sliding down a railing. Which I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good one because when people would do that in like high school or middle school, I'd be like, "Damn, that's pretty cool." Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think it's a solid pick. So we're going to start with you, Coley. First, who do you think wins this matchup? Now, for railings, are we also counting like fire poles? Um, mm, no, because I, I don't think, think that's so in this required case. by your job. Yeah, like, if your job requires you to do it, it's not that cool, probably. Oh, so fire, firemen gross. aren't cool now? <laughs> they're literally hot. Like, listen, listen it, it's it's Jason Tatum's job to put a ball in a basket. It's still pretty cool, <laughs> <laughs> right? The percentage is much smaller. I'd say. Uh, I don't. I don't think. No, I, I feel like if you're a firefighter, you get jaded by that in like week two. Well, all right. It, it was an important distinction because if we were counting firefighters slash strippers, I would have to vote for that. But since you're saying that does not count, <laughs> this is pulling a secret book that leads to a secret room and a landslide. I mean, there's the, the reaction in the room, I think, was enough of a vote. Like when you, <laughs> when you see that, when someone in a movie or, or even real life when they exist – Having that secret room, only so few. I think it's more the knowledge that so little people have of its existence. That's what really makes it cool. You know, it was a great scene with that. Uh, have you seen Atlanta, Coley? The show? Yeah. Yeah. The scene where uh, Ern's trying to get the club owner to give him the money and he keeps evading him and he does the secret wall thing that does like the turnaround. It like does like mm, a full yep. flip. It is like, it's so goddamn cool. It's unbelievable. Uh, but Shay, what are you picking? Um, Mm, Because the book thing is cool. What I will say about the book thing is like half the people that pull the book out of the bookshelf or the wall know that they're doing that and do it on purpose. The other half of people just stumble upon it, Mm -hmm. in which case it's not that cool, but it's a discovery like, wow, I found the secret chamber. Um, So... Yeah, I mean, I can't argue against it. Fuck. (laughs) Take take the book (laughs) out of the shelf. It's really cool. Rudy? Uh, yeah, no, it's a no brainer. You got to go with the book to a hidden room. Also, because I would say maybe 80% of the time that's going to a sex dungeon. Yeah. So I would say there's a very high percentage. Of yeah. That. So you're fucking. Mm-hmm. Whereas oh. I will also say another big uh, negative to sliding down the railing is sliding down a railing is cool as the person doing it in the moment when you're like midway through the rail. You're like, damn, I'm really mm-hmm. picking up speed. I'm moving. But when you get to the bottom and you have to do that like little hop <laughs> to mm-hmm. slow down and you're like at the movie theater, that's pretty fucking lame. Like I feel like that moment is pretty scary like in terms of like, damn, I just slid down that railing. And then you kind of like look around and everyone's like, you're a full grown man. Mm-hmm. I, I think I realized why you said that, that we both watch very different programming and we also take very different stairs because any stairs <laughs> that I would associate with rail slides are probably at most five 
Yeah, something oh, five yeah. deep. The oh, longer dude. the rail, the cooler the slide. Yes, yeah. I would mm-hmm. actually disagree. Really? Okay, wait. Def- I would love to hear the Because if you're on a short stair, it's like, okay, smooth. It is with the landing. It's like, okay, I can do this, but in a cooler way. If you're doing it with like flights and flights of stairs, like we're talking like a DC metro like subway station where it's like 500 feet underground, like, no, that's actually extremely dangerous and not that cool, I don't think. Danger is cool. Yeah, danger, danger is cool. Is inherently kind of cool. There was, it reminds me of that guy. Who's the guy in the New York subway with like wearing like a Chelsea jersey that like he was falling down this the the stairway the wrong way the escalator the wrong way down you the middle the Joe Budden video <laughs> no also very funny though yeah. uh it's just some kid he's like sliding down that middle partition between the escalators and he just like hits his asshole right on this bump <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh that video is awesome it is very funny uh oh and what would you pick um so you submitted sliding down poles we're not doing firemen we're not doing strippers <laughs> we're not doing big Big staircases. Yeah. This is just limited to <laughs> the ones you did in your five youth. Or less. Yep. Um, and those are risky to begin with. If you're not completely straight up when you're sliding, if you have any little give, you look so feminine. It's, uh, <laughs> and feminine's it's pulling, not cool. Pulling a book would it be is, cooler. I do me. think that getting led to that too, it's like, oh, you haven't seen nothing yet. And then they pull the book and then it opens. Like it is. That's got to be one of the coolest moments. It is kind of feminine because you do have to side saddle. Like, at, and weirdly, the most alpha way would be if you slid down the railing with like, the rail between your legs. Like yeah, you to basically, like, yeah, just leaning forward, <laughs> <laughs> just leaning forward, like with your arms like this, and if, just sliding down it. If you went face first down the stair rail and somehow landed it, I mean, you would be the probably the coolest man alive. I don't know how you pull it <laughs> off, but it would work. The coolest would be going down, somehow getting air and landing in a plank <laughs> back <laughs> on the railing that you slid down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Secret Room is going to move on, obviously. And now we have the number four seed versus the number 13. The number four, I think this was yours, Jay, and it was extremely correct. Uh, it's celebrating a shot before it goes in. As long as it goes in, obviously. Yes. Like Nick Young's yep. situation is not comply here. Like Steph Curry is what we're thinking. Um, great, great pick. That's our four seed going up against the number 13 seed, which is jet skis. And jet skis are extremely cool. They are. There's a lot of people that are uncool that ride jet skis, but the actual jet ski itself, extremely cool. I'm going to start with you this time, Owen. Fuck. Um, jet skis are the coolest thing in the world, I think, maybe. Um, fuck. But so is that video of Tiger celebrating his putt. It's difficult. Does anybody want to sway me? Anybody really feel Gilbert, something on have this? Have you seen the Gilbert Arenas one? MLK Day, maybe like 2009 or 10, takes a three-point shot against the Jazz to win the game before it even goes in the buzzer sounds. He turns around and just goes like this. See the ball going in. That's, I mean, if he turned out to be a Hall of Fame player, that's a top five NBA photo ever. Arguably Mm -hmm. his second greatest shot. After, <laughs> <laughs> well, I would I would I just think of the rarity. I submitted jet skis. Someone else might have as well, but jet skis are just motorcycles of the sea. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it takes like the coolest land vehicle, but then adds water, which I think makes it cooler. Mm-hmm. He's got a great point. I was uh, it's it's motorcycles definitely are exclusively for the cool because I tried to rent a moped one time at Martha's Vineyard and was denied after putting down my deposit. <laughs> Why? 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 I had to I had to like pass a test in yeah. which I had to drive it 50 feet. They're just like you don't look and good in that. You had to like test out the brakes and stuff like that. And I mean I'm 6'3, so I'm a larger person and a moped is small. So whenever I would go to break, I would naturally put my foot on the ground. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so the guy gave me like four chances, uh, and I could I could not not do that. I'd never been on that type of vehicle before, so it was just instinct to mm-hmm. be like, "All right, slow down." Like, so um, it sucked because we were with another couple, and then they were like, "Oh, like, all right, I guess we're just not going to do this." So, you're so I ruined them. everyone's day. Yeah. You're run alongside them while they're all on mopeds. Yeah, probably probably the least cool thing that's ever happened to me. That was actually a great argument for jet skis mm-hmm. so we'll, st- we'll we'll go back now to owen yeah i'm st- i'm gonna go with jet skis as the cooler thing uh i think the nick young really takes over the narrative for that that move in basketball and like you said jet skis is just like the coolest thing you could be on mm-hmm. way cooler than boats too all right rudy this is tough um 
I'm really hung up on the fact of the people that do ride jet skis. That's fair. I know that's a that's a very important thing to note here too. But I do want to. I feel like you can narrow it down. Cole, this is your pick, so maybe you could clarify more. I feel like it's the actual jet ski itself versus the common type of people that ride jet skis. Yeah, I, like when I just picture uh, a humanless jet ski, I'm like, that's sick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so more of the, the trailer, yeah. of jet ski, and like you talk about, it might be the perfect word. Like a mm-hmm. jet ski, it sounds. We, I mean, yeah. we have a coworker with that name. I think that that branding alone has done wonders for him. Yeah. Runs out of gas though. The word jet is great though. Yeah. Also, it it uh, it's so quick. It's one word, it a, and deep- they do look so fucking cool on their own. Like yeah. the shape of them is sexy. They look very like a sexy. like a plastic seal. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's very slippery. Yeah, and they're loud enough to the point where like when you're getting somewhere everyone's looking at you for the last 20 yards and they mm-hmm. see that big stream of water shooting out the back of it up into the air it looks mm-hmm. so good. but you're supposed to wear a life jacket when you're in it that that's uh, life jackets are very uncool, uncool. that's a very, very good uncool. point okay. you don't have to though none of us would wear them yeah you would definitely you wear a life jacket. very uncool <laughs> yeah i mean i i've Chair has a parachute. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be sick. So you can go really fast, but then also like in it, that might like no, that you know, just it would rip you off. Yeah, just rip. Yeah. I thought you were about to say like you do like a parasail type of deal where you just go as fast as you can on the jet ski, pull the ripcord, and then just go flying up into the air. I've always kind of wanted sick. to do that. Yeah. Also, um, even though celebrating a goal or anything before it goes in is like insanely cool. That one shot from Tiger King of that guy on the jet ski. Oh, oh that was yeah. no, that wasn't Jeff Lowe. The other it was Jeff Lowe. his, was bu- it yeah, was his yeah, buddy. buddy. It was like his criminal partner. Kind of like Mark Davis a little yeah. bit. Yeah, that <laughs> shot of him just like gliding across the water yeah. with his shades and his mullet flapping. I was just like, holy fuck, this guy. Even though he's a terrible person, mm-hmm. that was one of the like. One of the most amazing pieces of cinema I've ever seen in yeah. my life. So I gotta go jet ski. It's two for jet ski, Che. Definitely shooting a ball into the basket and turning around before it goes in. Like Nick Young is exempt from this because that didn't happen. He missed a shot. Having it go in is just ultimate swagger because very much like the secret bookcase, you know the answer that not everyone knows. You know the ball's going in. And then you get to celebrate it before everyone is aware. Ultimate cool move. For me, this is a one seed. And it is an all-time like high risk, high reward. Like he goes in like yeah, yeah, obviously you're the you're the coolest man on the planet. And it doesn't. You're Nick Young for yeah. the rest of your life. We're talking Larry Bird. Call me old school. Like you should be that. crashing your own fucking boards. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Shade is not a hard a fucking get to the rim when you put up shot. a shot. <laughs> yes, Coley. The the Nick Young thing I feel like is 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 being argued as a negative when it should be viewed as a positive for the people who pull it off because like we yeah. we view that as such a failure. Um, and to be fair to him, that thing was 90% of the way down. <laughs> yeah. and he, like he saw it going in as he turned around. So I can't even give him credit that he was doing the step. Like Steph is barely done, like letting go right. of the ball. Yeah. And he's like sitting on the opposing team's bench, taking a nap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, so what, what Steph does to me, it is cool, but it's more disrespectful than cool. Like I see it as is if we were talking like shit talking moves, that would be up there for me. Cool, decently cool, but it's more disrespectful to me. Jet skis. I mean, come on, I'm going jet ski. Yeah, wall to wall, cool. Mm-hmm. Jet ski is going to move on. Next up, we have the number eight seed versus the number nine seed. The number eight seed is I don't know how we want to phrase it, but it's just having a toothpick in. Ooh. Having a toothpick in. Very, very cool. That's like the instant. If you want any characterization in like a movie or whatever, you give it like a badass a toothpick. I immediately think they're cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's going up against the number nine seed, which is I put it as winning a fight. But I feel like winning a fight you didn't start specifically is extremely cool. Like someone else is the aggressor. They really get in your face. Almost like the, uh, the airport that guy at the guy. airport. Yeah. yeah. If you beat the ass of somebody who starts the fight, you are extremely cool, in my opinion. But Coley, we'll start with you. Winning a fight you didn't start versus toothpick guy. I mean, winning a fight, even if you do start it, is cool. So it's like you can't – losing a fight is objectively not cool. You just can't get your ass kicked. That's not cool. Uh, but I'm going toothpick here. Like there's – like it's kind of the counter to the jet ski thing. Like 100% of cool people have a toothpick but as opposed to like the life jackets. 
Um, like you don't see a, a nerd with a toothpick even by act like they're the type who would put it in and then like hiccup and swallow it and, <laughs> and, it and kill them. You would see uh, both tips coming yeah. out of the skinny <laughs> part of their, their neck like skin. making a whistle. It's like a flute. <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm going the toothpick. There's there's nothing cooler. Toothpick's got one. Jay, you're up. Hmm. So have all- you ever had a toothpick stuck in your throat horizontally not perfectly no, horizontally not in my throat i have used toothpicks so toothpicks i generally use for like their intended purpose was just to pick your teeth <laughs> which not is cool. very uncool yeah um and gross but um mm, starting or like finishing a fight that you didn't start like when i'm thinking about cool i'm thinking about like low effort but looks awesome so it makes it look like the person isn't trying i feel like the toothpick accomplishes that finishing a fight like is awesome but like you have to try to even knock someone out so i would rule that one out so i'm gonna say toothpick it's two for toothpick rudy i really want to go toothpick because i'm i'm a slut for subtlety and it's just Mm. such a nice little subtle thing whereas like a fight is this big grand gesture and almost always it's really awkward like even the one of the that ex broncos player in the airport mm-hmm. like after that like what does he do he's just like so do i go to like my gate now <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> you want to take care of my bag <laughs> yeah so is, is there a chick-fil-a in the I'll, I'll just go and then um but the one thing that makes the f- i mean like i'm thinking about world war ii <laughs> okay, obviously that's yeah. finishing Very a fight cool time. Yeah. that's a finishing a fight you didn't start and that's a pretty cool move um but at the end of the day, like I said, I love subtlety, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with toothpick. Three for toothpick, Owen. Uh, yes. So when I was a freshman in high school, I met a sophomore in high school in the Damn. courtyard. He was chewing a toothpick. I asked for one. Did he said he couldn't ass? give me one. They were cinnamon flavored toothpicks with nicotine in them. <laughs> He was using them to wean himself off nicotine at the age of 14. It was Jesus the coolest Christ. thing I had ever seen. That um, that single guy might have to win this. Do bracket. they still sell those? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I need those. I would bad. like that. <laughs> yeah, they must. Can they make one with like extra nicotine? So I guess yeah. use it instead of a cigarette. Um, you could just throw probably the whole wad in there. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, um, that's really fucking cool. Yeah, toothpicks are awesome. Nobody really knows why, but they are. You ever like uh, leave a diner or something like that, and you grab the toothpick on your way out as a kid, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm cool now. You yeah, in your mouth, you just feel cool. Always. Yeah, that fuck. They're gonna move on easily. Next, we have the number one seed versus the 16. The one seed is not caring, which is Uh-oh. objectively one of the coolest things you can do because then someone doesn't care about something. We just talked about it. We basically just proved the point of it earlier. And that is going up against the number 16 seed, boobs. Um, I feel like anytime we do a bracket, we do need boobs involved in some way, shape, or form. And boobs are very cool. Um, and not for their intended purpose, like uh, giving food to a baby. That's lame. But like mm-hmm. for other purposes, way cooler. Oh, and you get to start not caring versus boobs. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't really care. Um, <laughs> not caring mm-hmm. is such a meta. It's tough. It's a mind. It's a little bit of a mind fuck. It's unbeatable. But you, even if you don't care, like the one thing you'll always have to care for is titties. Mm, that's true. Even dudes who don't care, they care about titties. And I think that's because they're cool. And I'll say titties are cooler than not caring. One for titties, Rudy. Yeah, this this is uh in the last bracket episode I was on this one, right? I'm pretty not sure, caring. yeah. Not yeah. caring one, but what was the category? Um I think caring uh or was, one, it was caring ca- one lo- the lamest moves. Yes, okay, yeah. yeah. So it's sort of like the opposite mm-hmm. of this. Yeah, inverse. And it's like such an unbeatable force. And this this is like a an immovable object meets an unstoppable <laughs> force. Like not caring is the ultimate trump card in any situation, but the only thing that I can think of that could possibly beat it is boobs because they're so unanimously loved and protected by our species and they're the, the harbors of life. And they have so many different, they're multi-use. They come in so many different shapes and sizes. There's just really... Tastes. Yeah, mm-hmm. they taste different. You can dress them up. You can dress them down. I mean, it's... Yep. It, it's it's I, I I'd be betraying myself if I did if I said anything other than boobs. So it has to be boobs. I think uh, Owen's point is actually the best in that. N- even the people that don't care, they do. You have to yeah. care. Like a girl takes like, off her shirt. A you're calling like, card is like uh, didn't ask, don't care. 
when somebody says something to you. If I just showed you a picture of fat tits, you'd be yeah, like, right. oh, oh, yeah. Honk, honk. <laughs> be like, You're not going to be like, oh, I didn't ask. Don't care. Yeah. You're going to look at the tits. Your teeth fall out like piano keys and like your tongue rolls out like a red <laughs> carpet. Like It's just what happens. Uh, che, titties versus not care. So titties, are you specifying only female titties? Because that's a huge difference because man boobs are the least cool thing possible, I would think, they, right? They are very uncharming. I feel like the we are only including female titties here. Okay. Man um, boobs, I think, are titties with D T I D D I S. Oh, titties. Mm, yeah. Got man tids. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, it's got to be boobs. Like, hell yeah, brother. Definitely. Coley. Welcome to the right side of history. Oh, uh, yeah, give me the tits. <laughs> <laughs> I, I named my dozen team after them. That's a very good point. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> All right, before we get to our second half of the bracket, we're going to talk really quickly about 3Chi. All right, let's talk about 3Chi. We talk about it all the time. You get to skip the dispensary and get THC delivered directly to your door. Three Cheese Delta 8 is a federally legal version of THC and a more functional alternative to marijuana. It must be 21 years old to purchase because it's not just regular like CBD. It's a psychoactive and it really gives you that nice like no body feel but with a clearer head and less anxiety and paranoia. If you visit 3Chi.com, that's the number 3Chi.com and use promo code STOOL5, you get 5% off and a free can of fan flag sticker. This sale is exclusive to Barstool listeners. And they also have a variety of different edibles, vapes, drink enhancers, tinctures, and more. I always mention this every time we do a 3Chi ad. Their edibles are awesome. Try the Rice Krispies one. It's the best one. Uh, so, again, get 5% off all products at 3Chi.com plus a free can of fan flag sticker with code STOOL5. All right, thanks to 3Chi. Now we move on to the 11 versus the 6. The 11 seed was an addition, I think it was Rudy's, and it is very cool. Like At first I was like, what the fuck? And then I was like, oh, what? damn, this is... It's good, and it's disarming a bomb at the last second. <laughs> it's it's very cool. Like, and I was like, it's not something you traditionally think about or something that any of us will do in our lives, but it's really fucking cool. And that's going up against one that Troll Ballins actually lent to me, which is uh, catching a home run ball while you're holding a beer and not spilling any of the beer, Ooh. which is very strong. Cole, you get to start. <laughs> I hate to go against Rudy. I think it's much cooler to disarm a bomb with like plenty of time left. Like, <laughs> I don't know why more people don't think about that. Like, oh man, we saw there was four and a half minutes left on the clock, and it, we just stopped it in its fucking tracks. Uh, catching a ball barehanded unto itself, uh, especially one that has like a 110 mile per hour exit velo, very cool. Um, though I will say the uh, the face of catching home runs extremely yes. uncool Zach uh, yeah. so it's quite a bind <sighs> i think he never he's using a glove though and he's using both hands so that i guess that doesn't That's true yeah That's this true. is like and i feel like you can even it doesn't need to be a beer like whenever you see a guy holding his kid and he catches mm -hmm. a ball barehanded also very cool in my opinion but mm -hmm. i think that is just and the whole crowd cheers every time they see it they play it on the home run cam everyone goes yeah nuts. i mean when you catch foul balls like yeah. and, like people go bananas. So I'm yeah, there's I'm go a play. home run guy. Is that what you're saying? Zach Hampel. Yeah. He's interviewed by part of my take before, I believe. What? He's like, yeah, he's, he's caught like hundreds. He's a stuff. professional home run and foul ball catcher. And like, that's his job. Like he catches just, he goes to every part job, right? It's, it, point, it literally it's his is. Job, yeah. 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 I'm pretty sure it is. He yeah. wears the, um, the Rob Lowe hat, but yeah. for baseball, <laughs> mm -hmm. so it just has the MLB, like the umpire's hat, basically. Um, <laughs> What a wild thing to dedicate your life. He's like, not he got kids and a shit, ton yeah. of, there was a game a few years ago that was only for the troops. It was like on a military base <laughs> and like only troops could get tickets. And he found his way in there and people were furious. Oh, I thought you were going to say he joined the Marines <laughs> so that he could get to the game. <laughs> people would have been less furious. Uh, he just like snuck in. So he, cause it was like a, the ball was different. Like it said, like, the event on the ball so he was like i gotta get me one of those yeah <laughs> yeah and he ran into some guy at this game and he's like what do you do he's like oh i disarm bombs in afghanistan yeah and see it would have worked i would have i would have not questioned that for a second if you told me he was a bomb guy or whatever <laughs> i'd be like well no one would lie about that because you need to be cool to do that um but okay so that's one right now for catching the home run ball jay versus mm. disarming bombs yeah um it is tough because disarming a bomb is not relatable. None of us could ever 
yeah. really do that. Actually, catching. I don't a home love run. when you speak for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, catching a home run ball, Barry, like any of us could be in the right place at the right time and uh, make a nice stretched out grab. So um, I feel like that would be more exciting. I can't really picture myself or really another person. What was that movie? The Hurt Locker. Hurt, Hurt Locker, Locker, yeah. Where the guy disarms it. Certainly a cool moment and everybody's going to be, like Coley was saying, like applauding, but like, yeah, they would have been much happier had it happened sooner. So yeah. I got to say the, the home run ball. All right, it's two for home run ball. Could you technically consider, like, is catching a home run ball also disarming a bomb? Sort of, or would that be like, <laughs> like in its own sort of twisted sense? Yeah, you're you're disarming a a something that can cause harm. Yeah, well, it's in you call them bombs, so like I don't know, it's good. Uh, Rudy, you're up. That's actually a very funny thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, I didn't catch a home run. I disarmed. <laughs> I just dis- call it disarming a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. That's really good. Um, I'm I'm gonna go with disarm the bomb, but I will give a reason, even though it's not not just because it's my pick. I would say. If you took a stadium full of people, say a baseball game, for example, and someone hit a home run and you caught the the ball, everyone would be like, "Woo!" You know, like cool. But it happens constantly. Now take that same baseball game, and at home plate, instead of there being a catcher and a hitter, there's a bomb. <laughs> and if it blows up, it blows up the whole stadium. And if it blows up, everyone goes up in flames. And then a guy walks out there, and then the somehow the the guy who made the bomb tethered the scoreboard to the clock to the bomb and so everyone's like can see the five four and then he even hacks the like uh graphic system and he's like let's get louder in here (laughs) and then and then then the guy snips the right the right wire and no one dies Mm -hmm. imagine that applause so i'm gonna go incredible i feel like i do think leaf than applause yeah, you'd be. I feel like you'd be like, yeah, sigh of relief, but people would be cheering like goddamn crazy. I think fans in baseball stadiums stink so much that as he successfully disarmed the bomb to save the lives of the 40,000 people there, they'd be like, you should have let the cute little kid do it. <laughs> <laughs> the cute little kid should have disarmed the, the bomb. Waves happening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think a good example for that would be like uh, Dark Knight Rises. Like if you disarmed yeah. Bane's bomb before it blew up the Pittsburgh State, like Heinz Field yeah. or whatever that was, like they would have been going crazy. Yeah, that would have mm-hmm. gone buck wild. So, yeah. yeah, it's a bomb. It's All right. a bomb. It's one for bomb. Owen? Uh, yeah, it's a bomb. I'm thinking of more ways bombs would go off at a game. <laughs> give a lot of situations where bombs go off. Why does that not happen? I feel like that's should be a prime target. Yeah, like the hat game where the three hats are bouncing. Metal yeah, detectors. could be two baseballs and a bomb. I mean, they had they had like metal detectors at Oklahoma City. I'm assuming, and like other places like so that. that. Municipal building, or I guess they, that was a, a car outside of the yeah. municipal building. So, so, U-Haul, yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, something like that. That's fair. But yeah, uh, disarming bombs for sure. All right, I got a tie break, and I think Rudy swayed me. Hold, holding a beer also doesn't like make things cooler. No, think. but like balancing it yes, and like yes, not yes, letting yes. it fall specifically. 100%. So I think I got swayed by Rudy to disarming bombs because like that that hypothetical where you disarm the bomb in some sort of <laughs> twisted, sick fucking game in the middle of a stadium where everyone's held hostage. Yeah, people will be going ballistic. Um, so I'm going to go with 11 disarming bombs. We now we figured out disarming bombs. What does the class look like where the professor teaches that? It's just like, yo, it's the red one. It's like, it's that's the, they call it the yeah. military course. <laughs> they like bomb squads and the police and shit. Oh, yeah, true. They do. Yeah. I guess I forgot about bomb squad. Yeah. Which is what they also call like whenever they have like a good home run hitting group in a in baseball, they call them the bomb squad. So mm-hmm. like that's, that's true. Again, there's a lot of parallels here in these two things. That is true. All right. Next up, we have the number three seed versus the number 14. The number three seed is sunglasses. Um, and specifically because I think that they are emblematic of cool. Like they are like when you think of like the cool guy emoji, it's the guy with the sunglasses on. It's like you, you use it to symbolize cool and not like there's plenty of not cool people that wear sunglasses and there's plenty of not cool sunglasses. But it's just it's a symbol of cool. Uh, and that's going up in number 14 seat. And this is very specific, but it's uh, tattoos. So tattoos and that's lost some meaning over the, over the years. But tattoos at one point considered extremely cool you could be like the first one in your school to get a tattoo you're very cool just how it rolls but owen you get to start first sunglasses versus tattoos uh shades i think like you said i think tattoos have fallen off a bit i know i have a handful now that's like a pretty telltale sign they don't hold the merit they used to (laughs) um so i'll go sunglasses one for sunglasses rudy Uh, it's a tough one 
Uh, mostly because there's just such a history of tattoos. And I'm thinking... You're thinking, thinking like triad tattoos yeah, and I'm shit? Yeah, I'm thinking Jason cool. Momoa. I'm yeah. thinking... Tribals. The Rock. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, Yakuza tattoos are sick as hell. hell. Like, right. Crazy yeah, they cool. Um, sunglasses? I don't know. I mean... I don't think Ray Charles thinks sunglasses are very cool. <laughs> he's argued he's never seen them before, so I don't know if he cares. <laughs> um, that man has seen everything. I saw a picture of him the other day with a digital camera, just taking a picture. And it's, really? Everyone, everyone's like, really? He's looking through Ray the Charles or Stevie Wonder? Or Stevie Wonder. Or Stevie Wonder. Oh, yeah. Stevie I'm Wonder too, too, as well. Yeah, Stevie yeah. Wonder. Dude, mm-hmm. I was in fucking Pawtucket, Rhode Island, and watched one of those guys with the sticks that they, went, uh, they, mm-hmm. they hit on everything. Uh, and they walked up to a self serve checkout. They checked out on a touch oh screen Wendy's. <laughs> no fucking way. I swear to God. I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's that. You, did you go up to him? You confront him? No, <laughs> dude. For stolen valor. He's, gross. Like, he's <laughs> blind and shit. You, you, you kick his stick. How many fingers am I holding up? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think just because I'm, I'm thinking of traditional, like old school tattoos, like sailors, you know. Mm hmm. Those like, like old Russian prisoners, Russian have, like prison. the ones they all mean something. Like if you have yeah. the teardrop too, it means that you murdered someone. Like yeah, that's pretty. Funny. And then if you just walk in with just sunglasses on, it's like, uh, bro, mm-hmm. come on. Hear me out, brands. Oh, mm-hmm. brands are super cool. Okay, Maybe I, cooler. Yeah, I, I think you could count that. But also brands, I think frats immediately, which I don't right. think mm-hmm. particularly yeah. cool, whatever that's worth. But then I think like Quentin Copels for some reason with his massive fucking yeah. whatever his is his. Two uh, dog, right? Yeah, yeah, he had a huge one on his arm which i thought was very cool yeah i'm gonna go uh, i'm gonna go tattoos it's one for tattoos jay so i have a tattoo and a brand you have a brand you have a where's brand? your brand oh, yeah it's on my arm it was um me and some buddies did it watch this be the nfl logo <laughs> that <laughs> would be so goddamn it was funny. uh it was very unprofessional it was uh, a metal wire that we unfurled and put in a fire pit and it's just this. It's pretty. Oh, creative. okay. Oh, it looks like a scar, like it's just yeah. a regular scar. It's literally just a straightened out wire hanger that was in a fire pit for a while and put on my. That arm probably hurt like arm. fuck. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I'm tough as shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brother. Um, I also have a tattoo, but the I don't know. I feel like both of these things are watered down. Like everyone has a pair of sunglasses. Plenty of people have tattoos. There are a lot of bad mm-hmm. sunglasses, and there are a lot oh, of God, bad too. tattoos. Um. Like man, uh, I think tattoos are a little bit more watered down because you could have people with like 20 tattoos or 50 tattoos or whatever. Most people only have, you know, one or two pairs of sunglasses. So, uh, <laughs> and also like going, going back That's to, uh, point. going back to like history, like, yeah, it was cooler to have sunglasses like back in the day as opposed to like a tattoo. It's like fucking Navy anchor. That's not that sweet. So, mm. um, I'm going to say sunglasses. <laughs> I mean, Coley, I know you agree. <laughs> <He's> got- <laughs> Is that a Navy anchor? <laughs> you weren't in the Navy, were you? My daughter's name's Sailor. Yeah. Were you in the Navy? <laughs> what? what? You don't have to be in the Navy to have an anchor tattoo. Okay. Well, I'm saying that's what they used to be. <laughs> All right. Well, Coley, it's up Apologies. to you now. Tattoos or sunglasses? <laughs> did everyone else know you had that? I did. I didn't know you had that. No, I didn't know either. I know. I feel like I have. I've seen you. I know your tattoo guy, Coley. Yeah. Um. I, the my biggest argument against sunglasses is transition lenses, which I feel like Stephen Chase probably had at one point. Mm. I have not, but I have already been public. I want to get into the transition lens game. <laughs> That makes right. sense. And there's nothing less cool than someone Correct. stepping outside. But in so practical. It it's one of those things that was a great idea whenever someone said it, and they look just so fucking stupid 10 out of 10 <laughs> times. Like sunglasses are fine. I feel like sunglasses at night specifically, A, good song, B, cool move, because you know that person's likely on a lot of drugs. Mm-hmm. Um, true. But even like watered down tap twos in the sense that like a lot of people we don't think are cool have them there it goes back to not caring there is still a level of not caring you have to have if you're going to cover yourself in Mm -hmm. tattoos Mm -hmm. uh you're you're saying outright like i know most of society still will not accept me there are jobs i cannot get um so that's cool 
uh, I'm, I'm for sure going with tattoos. I don't care how many people <laughs> have them now. It's still cool. I think you say I don't care how many people make fun of my sale uh, or my. Uh, yeah, I mean, if Rudy said that, devastated. <laughs> <laughs> I would never. All right, God damn it! I have to tie break again. Um, I thought it was three one. Uh, it's t- I think it's two two right now. No, you I picked sunglasses. Oh, you did sunglasses. Okay, so sun. So it's sunglasses wins then, right? Okay. No. No. Wait, no. No. It's two, two. Shades. It is two, tattoos. Two. Oh, shades. shades. Uh, I thought Owen wants tattoos. My oh, okay. Yeah. yeah you confused no. me there. All right. Yeah. I do have the tie break. All right. So for me, I think that um, I put sunglasses in three C because of what it's emblematic of and like that it is just it's the symbol of cool. Like it is the coolest. Like it's what you think of with cool. Like mm-hmm. so, it's very hard to uh, root against it. You're afraid See, of the sun. The fucking sun. <laughs> the fucking sun. I'm so afraid of it. I'm fucking, I'm white as fuck, dude. I burn up in the sun. That's why I'm wearing those sunglasses. I can't see shit. Um, I think that the tattoos, though, like when you think, I think like Yakuza tattoos, like you're saying before, so cool. Like certain tribals look sick as hell, but like uh, I'm not accessible to take, I can't get either of those tattoos at all. So like there's a level of inaccessibility for me. Um, I will definitely go with sunglasses here, but it is, it's, it's a little closer than I thought it would be. Um, next up, we have the number. When are you going to transition? Yeah, when's your transition date? <laughs> Just health insurance cover it? Wait, what? Oh, for transition lenses? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, I, we know I, what you're talking about. You don't have to say lenses. So yeah. when are you transition? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Probably in a couple of years. Um, is it weird that I like want to look like Ron Rivera? <laughs> Yeah, you know that makes sense. There's a lot of people that transition that want to look like Ron Rivera. <laughs> He's gonna put he him in his fucking bio yeah. after he gets transition lenses. Yeah, imagine going to a sexual reassignment surgery and be like, "I'm looking, to, I'm looking to look like Ron Rivera." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, "We call that the number four around here." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you gotta tell us when that date happens. We want to be there to support you. Um, I mean, I'll wear them to the office. All right, yeah, we'll make sure that J.K. Rowling isn't around or anything <laughs> after that date. Uh, all right, we have the ten, the ten seed dunking, which is dunking is extremely cool. And like, I feel like it, I think of in high school, like the people that could dunk were the coolest people in gym or whatever, anything. Especially if they weren't outrageously tall. Mm-hmm. If they were like six two and we're or six one, five ten, five eleven, whatever, and we're dunking, you're they're the coolest humans. Um, and that's going up against the number seven seed, being able to dance well. Um, and you still think Shay, this was your pick was dance or maybe it was then yours, Rudy's. It was mine. Yeah. You picked dancing. And I think I want to narrow it down to being able to dance well, because we can all try, but yeah, people who dance well are the coolest. A hundred percent. Yeah. And um, in my own head, I was thinking of just, I just, I just fancy you. I wish I had rhythm. Yeah, me too. And as a bunch of, uh, white men in here, I think we all know what I'm talking about. Yes, we do know. Uh, we're going to start with you this time, Coley dunking or dancing. Dancing is sick. Both super athletic things, even though I don't know if that's the first thing people think of with dancing, but especially if you dance well, like you probably are a crazy athlete. For my money, I don't think there's anything in in sports that touches dunking. Uh, I know hockey certainly doesn't have anything for it. Baseball, like home runs are cool, but there's just something so impressive about like the there's a whole contest built around it mm-hmm. and i know there's home run derby but still I, I have to go dunking have to especially like you put your arm your whole arm through the hoop oh yeah forget it i didn't like that dunk at first the vince like i feel like everyone was very confused by that when they at the first second he put his arm to us like what the fuck yeah, you know, I had seen it. It it like broke right. everyone's brains, and then you started thinking about it. it. Was like that really looks like it hurts a ton. Yeah, <laughs> it has to hurt a ton. Has anyone gotten hurt doing that? Probably. Def- I mean, definitely. Joe, Joe Green lost a finger. Yes, stuck on the. He yeah, I knew a kid who lost yeah, he's, a finger. I know he's missing on his rim. ring fingers. I didn't know that he lost a finger from dunking. It's like cut yeah, off on like here, one yeah. of his first dunks. He lost it <laughs> like mm. when he was like 13. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And then he was he like a pretty good three-point shooter, which is crazy considering I think it was on his dominant hand too. Bertans has the same thing. Bertans only has four hands, I believe, on his shooting hand. Four hands. Four fingers, four <laughs> fingers on his shooting hand. That would be incredible four-handed basketball player. <laughs> I mean, that guy would That's, be nasty. Yeah, be a Goro. yeah General <laughs> Grievous. Yes, <laughs> a literal General Grievous on the court. Um, all right, so that's one for Ducky. And I agree with you. And I would note that, like, posterizing, too, specifically, 
is one of the coolest things. Like, I mean, that like, Andrew Wiggins talked the yeah. other night. Yeah. Like, that's what that's what it's all about. Or even like it. Vince Carter and that French dude in the Olympics. Like French he murdered advice. that man. Yep. Like that was insane. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Jay, dunking or dancing? So Coley brought it up. Slam dunk contest. We assemble the best dunkers that are willing to participate in the world. And everyone just makes fun of the event and says how lame it is. Um, so I feel like it can't be done. Dancing very cool um, or very well is something that all men are inherently jealous of, no matter how yes, much true. they deny it. Be like, shit, I wish I could do that. But they don't want to put any anywhere near the time or the effort to do so. Um, so I think it's dancing. Mm. I think uh, I remember in, I think it was middle or high school, trying to learn how to not Dougie. I think it was do do the soldier boy and i was like this is this is not for me yeah <laughs> i can't do it rudy i mean you just described what the reason i put this pick in there i've always wanted to be able to dougie or to crip walk mm -hmm. or cat daddy cat i was like daddy. it's so simple but i don't look cool or stanky leg mm -hmm. or just fucking move the jerk man the jerk i tried so many times i can't do it yeah the I, jerk yeah yeah, you the know, jerk like, I yeah. can do. I can I do the jerk. But that was like the one they let us have. Yeah, <laughs> they literally set that one up so that we could participate. They threw us a bone. Yeah, they hit us with the Dougie and the cat daddy, and they're like, I don't know, give him the jerk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> They'll just backpedal and. I was watching fucking what's his name? It was, um, who's the Eagles wide receiver guy? That dude, dude in the end zone. Um, oh my god, their guy. He was on. Uh, yeah, Deshaun Jackson. Like Deshaun Jackson okay. doing it into the end zone, and I was like, I want to do that, and I just couldn't. Yeah. yeah, I just want a gritty. I just, I just want to be able to move like water on the dance floor and have mm -hmm. swagger. Um, and when people can do it, I think it's very cool. I think dunking is wildly overrated. I think it's interesting. Just a, I That's think a hockey it's, guy take. It's a wildly <laughs> overrated thing to do. As someone who who very much can dunk, I can dunk, obviously, easily, and I've I've been there and done <laughs> that. And I've, Rudy dunks all the time. I yeah. dunk constantly, and um. I have, I have a history of dunking. <laughs> Talking like it's Oreos always, or? it's, it's, it's always dancing. Mm. All right. One for another one for dancing. Actually. Yeah, that is two for dancing now. Uh, Owen, uh, read the matchup to me one more time. Dunking versus dancing. So polite ways of us saying we want to be black. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so dunking, I think is uh, unique for this bracket. Cause just doing it at all is cool. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like, oh, sliding down, there's cool ways to do it, not cool ways to do it. If you can dunk, that's like enough of a wow, at least in our circles. All you have to do is be able to dunk, and that's sick. And then there's levels of posterizing, all that. That's awesome. Um, dancing, even if we were good at it, I don't think any of us would pull it off. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, I'll go with dunking. All right, we're tied up again. Um, and this is a really hard one because this was like dunking, for all the reasons you guys said, that voted for it like it is one of the coolest individual feats you can accomplish in uh any sport any professional sport like i'm trying to think of one like in football even like you truck stick someone like like jadavian clowny style like yeah that's really goddamn cool but like even that isn't as like athletically impressive to me as dunking is and right. like regular people can do it like like people just in you're playing street ball or whatever like they can just do it it's it's such a combination of power and finesse that yeah. like really nothing else translates to it like even hitting dingers that's mostly just raw power mm -hmm. um and like the thing with dancing is like you can get by being a bad dancer like people there really isn't that's a that's a you thing like it, I, I think part of the reason edm music took off so much is because you just really have to jump around like you don't mm -hmm. have to do any any actual dancing people are like yeah, they don't even cool. jump anymore they just like move they their head their head yeah it's yeah. it's nice and then clench their jaws <laughs> and clenches <laughs> grind their teeth to yeah. boat to dust so yeah i, I mean i i think dancing's it's not overrated because, but like, I mean, if you saw a guy who was just like tearing up the floor and there was no one else there with him, you're like, all right, guy, let's calm it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. But also, I do think that in like, if you're going out to bars or whatever, and like there's the one guy dancing really well, like women conflate that with sex. So, uh, yeah. fuck, uh, maybe a revote. Are we including when they push their body around? Oh, yeah, that that's definitely because that is one of the coolest forms of dancing. Yeah, that's not. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, where then they start up straight yeah, and then they're like pushing pushing shoulders back yeah, and chest. Like and pop locking. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of what like, is yeah, it called? Yeah. Pop locking. Like pop locking. That's fucking sick. It's yeah. very cool. I'm going to change my vote to dancing. 
the default changes to dancing then, and that means dancing is going to move on over the dunking. Seven seed dancing. That um, is cool as hell when they do that. Do. It is extremely cool. Fuck. Damn it. I didn't even think the about Jabba that. Jabba or Vince Carter in the All-Star game? The Jabba Walkies. Cool. Yeah. When they came out yeah, for the that, walkies, bro. that uh, what do you call it? The baby video? Do you remember that? And then, uh, what was it? The, the baby. Shaq? Yeah, and the baby video. Oh, it, came, yeah. it came out in the middle of it, and it was like everyone went fucking ballistic. Um, all right. Now we have the number two seed versus the 15. The number two seed is smoking. And I will let us narrow it down to which form of smoking we're talking about. Could be smoking a cigarette. Could be smoking a cigar. Could be smoking weed. Could be really well. We can kind of define which one we want to go for here. But which one do you think is the coolest? Gravity bong. Pipe Gra- tobacco. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> Pipe tobacco. Gravity bong is pretty good. Jay. Opium den. <laughs> Opium. I was I was going to exclude hard drugs, but yeah, that is, opium den is a cool ass term. It's opium, even a hard drug by today's standards. I feel like it's pretty it, middle of the road. I think it's just heroin. It's like a different form of like right, like same sort of thing. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, no opinion on which smoking is cool. Uh, smoking a cigarette indoors if it's legal. I, I think that cooler than that is smoking a cigarette while doing something active. Like that guy in the XFL or whatever that was smoking while he was running drills, like that was cool as shit. That was so goddamn cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think the single coolest cigarette, and I've been watching Mad Men a lot recently, so it's all mm-hmm. I see is people smoking cigarettes, but like smoking directly after sex is is the smoking. Yeah, post-coital. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's pretty so, dope. So Hand-rolled is nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I the think Tom and Jerry gif where he, <laughs> he rolls it all in one hand and then uses... Uses the mouse to lick it close. Yeah, yeah then, that then clip itself it. might be enough for smoking. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so we're gonna do hand rolled cigarette for specifically. Or should we just do or cigarette? Just yeah. All right, let's do this. Let's go with smoking cigarette. That's going up against the number fifteen Rudy seed, is. which I think was yours too, Rudy. Uh, possibly walking away from an explosion. No, that wasn't mine. No, that's not you, Coley. No. Oh, then that was you, Owen. No. Oh, no. then maybe that was just me. That rules. Yeah. Is that, that you, Chuck? Yeah, then that was mine, actually, then. So walking away from an explosion <laughs> without wincing, like without any sort of reaction, very, very cool. Uh, so we'll start out with you this time, Coley. Walking away from an explosion or smoking cigarettes? Oh, you start with me last time. Go to Owen. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so Owen, smoking cigarettes or walking away from explosion? Fuck, man. This feels like the title game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This feels big, boys. Um, Are you walking away from the explosion because you couldn't defuse the bomb in time? That's what I was thinking. I can't remember. You set the bomb. You never. Or know. you had to get cl- so close to the explosion to light your cigarette, and then you're just running away yeah. as it goes off. Um, or you dropped your cigarette at a gas station by accident, <laughs> <laughs> and you have noise canceling headphones in. It's like Zoolander, yeah. Um, fuck. Walking away from explosions, awesome. In the same vein, driving away from a sandstorm. Oh, yeah. Um, Mummy style. Or snowboarding, uh, running an avalanche on a Ooh, snowboard. Yeah, damn. Okay, we could change it from walking away from explosion to, to, to outerizing out- away from or, calamity. Or, or, yeah, outrunning Mother Nature. Yeah, yeah. outrunning <laughs> in general. The yeah. one guy who escaped Mount Vesuvius. Like the guy yeah. who just, <laughs> just got to the edge Actually, of town. Actually, I think the guy that died jerking off and he got like entombed with his dick in yeah. his hand. I think that guy was pretty. That That's real? Cooler. Yeah, you've never yeah. seen it? Yeah, yeah it's no. amazing. He's jerking his dick off. Yeah, see, and he's just entombed. Like, he's like, he looks like a little fucking burnt up Hot Pocket when he's this dick in his hand. It's very funny. The only Everyone thinks that... he's this, like, sad guy that was like, oh, I'm dying, I'm about to jerk off. But, like, the close writings say he was on his, like, 18th yeah. nut of the day. He was, he was just record. getting in as many. They knew it was Damn, coming. Yeah. Yeah. Doing the Portland yeah. Challenge, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the only people that survived Pompeii were people that were doing semen retention. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's lost in history. They had the Sigma mindset. Is yeah, exactly. semen flammable? I don't know. I've never Something tried. Something tells me no. It's wet, right? So gas yeah, but is wet. gas is what. Yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> it's, it's a quick. No one run. in the history of the world has ever tried to light their own semen in fire. I bet. I, I feel like it's probably been tried. Like someone's like, I, oh, okay. I don't think there's anything semen related that hasn't been tried. <laughs> also true. <laughs> Fair. So which one are you going to pick, smoking or walking away from that explosion? I think for the same reason you went sunglasses, I'll go smoking. Just it's like iconic, emblematic of. Mm-hmm. Imagine if you were smoking a cigarette while walking away from an explosion. That's what I've been thinking about this whole time, Rudy. It's it's just tough. Um, smoking is obviously much more of a realistic thing. Walking away from an explosion, I wonder if it ever actually has happened. 
in the way that they that wasn't in a movie like i get that like when they shoot movies it physically is happening but i'm saying like no cameras no anything Mm -hmm. i wonder if anyone has ever had a clean walk off of an explosion the other guys made fun of that right like there's a scene where they walk up and the building explodes and they're like like how do fucking people in movies do this This is so unrealistic because their ears are blown out and they have blood blisters and shit yeah um doesn't mean it hasn't happened mm -hmm. um that is fascinating those tropes that like have only been Made movies. in like cinematic universe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I don't. I think that that probably was made in a movie. It's such a sp- hyper specific thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's actually kind of the same thing as the basketball shot and walking away from like swishing a shot. That's and not, fair, lo- and fair, not yeah. looking. Mm-hmm. Which I think of the most iconic ones I can think of. Like I think Man on Fire did one that was really cool, if I remember yeah. right. Um, that was a sick one with Denzel. The Joker. Um, the Joker is Joker, a great one. Joker, great one. Ad libbed moment on that as well. And um, who was it? Uh, Javier Bardem in No Country for Old Men had a really good one. Dude, it was of a car too. The really fact that one. you just said that fucking Joker scene, I gotta yeah. go explosion. Walking away from the explosion gets a vote. Che. I think we gotta delineate what about the explosion is cool because diffusing a bomb is very cool at the last second diffusing with a lot of time left is very cool but like if you're a bomb diffuser and you just give up on it (laughs) you just walk away with (laughs) 10 seconds to go to get out of range and you're walking away from it technically that would fall in this category so i feel like i can't vote this through for that reason dude they wouldn't even be mad at the guy he would look so cool yeah they would definitely be mad at him. if walking he was wearing away. shades just walking, walking away he's like sorry guys. walking away yeah. from a bomb you didn't the stadium yeah. going in guys later. <laughs> not my problem yeah gotta protect old number one yeah. <laughs> or so- like <laughs> a union bomb diffuser and he just gets up and leaves right at five. He's like, I am not, yeah. not my monkeys, not my, my circus. Yeah. I'll talk to my supervisor. Yeah. <laughs> not getting overtime for that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's another one for smoking. Coley. You guys didn't fill out the forms. That's the proper forms for this bomb. <laughs> I don't, I don't do, I don't work on those type of bombs. No way. Jerry, Jerry would not defuse that bomb. Yeah. If it was past his time. I don't know why people don't use Italian made bombs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You got the wrong kind of stuff here. This is fucking rubbish. <laughs> uh, yeah, the the whole improbability of that ever happening uh, has me lean. I mean, there's really nothing cooler than smoking cigarettes, especially since you're you're just very slowly killing yourself. Like you mm-hmm. know what you're doing, and we've known for a long time, and mm-hmm. it it upsets me like. The whole jewel vape thing was so much lamer than cigarettes ever were. Like you're just yes. smoking a computer. Like that's not nearly as cool <laughs> as smoking a cigarette. Yeah. They're like, so lame. <laughs> yeah. It's it like even weed, like weed patents, like not as cool as smoking just actual weed. Like mm-hmm. I, I get the convenience of it. I understand the technological advancements that have happened. But just lighting up a cigarette. If you saw two people standing outside of a bar, one was smoking a cigarette and the other one was vaping, you know who's the cooler person. It's not even mm-hmm. cool. I switched from chewing tobacco to vape when I was single because I was like, oh, girls will think uh, dip is gross. But then when you have a vape, they, they think you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, it's, it's a common identifier. I went from uh, I trying to quit vaping. I went to cigarettes. Yeah, mm. I've done that too. That's a smart way to go. I think anyway. Yeah. Probably because at least because it's more expensive. The only part, the problem is then I had to quit cigarettes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you, well, you should have had the toothpicks. Then you go, no. So the easiest, the best way they say on the internet to quit uh, cigarettes is to vape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you just get caught in this nice back and forth loop where most of the money you make is going to this product that you don't even feel anymore. (laughs) Use tolerance of, (laughs) you know, it's another thing. Another note for cigarettes is like, I can't think of anything that was cool in 1900 that's cool now except for smoking. Like, yeah. that has stood the and test of time. The U.S. government anything. probably spent, what, half a billion dollars yeah. on ad campaigns trying to make it seem like it wasn't cool, and everyone mm-hmm. was like, nah uh And I think we, we voted on this once in an LCB draft. I think Joe Cool was arguably the coolest being to ever have exist, like yeah. the, the fucking camel that smoked. Like, mm-hmm. he was so cool that the government had to enact a binding resolution to outlaw him because he was so cool <laughs> that kids wanted to smoke because of him. Um, so I, I'm, I'd be with you guys. Smoking's going to move on. And now we get to go through our playoffs. First, we have the 13 seed jet skis versus the number 12 seed, uh, the secret room with the bookcase handle. Was there fun. no Che in game? 
Was there no no chain game in this one? Boobs had to take the 16 spot, and I was running out of room, so gotcha. Had to had to give Boobs the last spot, fair, and it seems fair. like Boobs would have won the chain game anyway. Most likely, I just thought of one. That's why I was asking. Oh, which one is it? Because we can always sub in. We were very loose when we were talking about um, the explosions, and then I became Mother Nature. Surfing is the coolest thing a person Fuck. can do. Like yeah. I was thinking of a barrel closing. Yeah. Like, I, I wish I'd thought of it earlier. Um, getting fucking pitted. I, yeah, just, and the whole lifestyle that comes with it. Like, most surfers. surfers are, like, the poorest people on the planet, and they don't care at all. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. Like, they're having the, the grandest of times. You live in Hawaii, most likely. Like uh, Basically, anything that they did in Point Break could be on this list as well, just in yeah. general. Like, skydiving. Like, skydiving's very cool. Um, yeah. We can maybe sub in disarming bombs with surfing. Rudy's. Yeah, uh, but what do you think, Rudy? What would you say? So, sub out disarming bombs for surfing? Uh, well, it depends on the matchup. I, I want that. It's want versus to... sunglasses. I was gonna say let's get sunglasses out of there. Yeah, Wouldn't surfing. Okay, be you want to get rise and like outrunning Mother Nature? Like that's actually exactly what I was thinking of. Is like those yeah. surfers and like monster. Yeah, waves, and monsoons and shit. And you're outrunning the mm. wave that mm -hmm. could paralyze me. Yeah. I would. Yeah, I would vote to get rid of sunglasses. Okay, let's dump sunglasses because smoking is like the cooler version of like the so sunglasses and smoking are basically the same. That's true. It's two sides mm -hmm. of the same coin. They're kind of the same thing, but the smoking one is obviously way cooler fact. So we kind of already have. All right. We'll sub out sunglasses. Yeah. Right, but first we'll start on the other side of the bracket. shades to SIGs are as Kratom is to heroin. Exactly. Yes. 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 Correct. Yes. <laughs> 13 seed jet ski versus the 12 seed pulling that bookcase leading you to this, to the, to the secret room. Uh, we'll start out with you, Coley. Hey, these are two. I suggested. It's tough. The pulling the book came to me before jet skis did. So obviously my brain prioritized that as cooler. Um, yeah. Secrets in general are just cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so a secret room. One that you've had. Like in my mind too, like you build, you build that. You have to kill the construction worker because he's the other guy who knows that it exists. So yeah, it's, it's definitely that. Was it a, I think it was Genghis Khan's tomb. He had like 10,000 workers build it. And then he had 10,000 soldiers kill those 10,000 workers. And then he had 20,000 soldiers kill those 10,000 soldiers so that no one could find out where he was buried, which is, that is also yeah. Yeah. Tombs are are cool guy. Yeah. Tombs are cool as fuck. I mean, pyramids, pyramids were sick. Um, so that's one for the secret rooms. Uh, che. Wait, secret rooms against which one? It's against jet skis. Jet skis. Mm. I feel like anyone looks cool on a jet ski, even if you're wearing a life jacket. But I feel like the the book thing has me hung up. Like, have you guys been to that bar in New York? Please don't tell. I've heard. I've never been. So it's like a it's like a speakeasy, which just means like a bar that not that many people go to because it sucks. And you go to like this phone booth, and then. I, forget how you actually it's like get say, in like a secret like, code or something yeah. yeah like they let you in like kind of through mm -hmm. the phone booth um and it's just like a fairly uncrowded bar that has very overpriced drinks but that yeah. makes me think of the pulling the bookcase thing in which case it's like all right well that place kind of sucks like what specifically is great about that um and also the people that like kind of stumble upon it um i feel like everyone no matter what can look cool on the jet ski so i feel like jet ski is moving through for me one for jet ski i, I went to a speakeasy on the upper east side that was like in an ice cream parlor like a fake ice cream parlor and they kicked me out because my shoes weren't nice enough <laughs> that was beyond that's a, that's, a, that's a cool move bro them. my girl was with me too a guy was fucking mortified what kind of was, shoes are you wearing like, like fucking sneakers i didn't know it was like a fancy type of joint like she just like yeah i heard about this speakeasy let's just go to it i just went to it not realizing i needed to be like dressed to the nines Wearing fucking legit shoes, like fucking Oxfords. You should have showed him the Nike Air Monarchs that What's were on the cover of GQ <laughs> two months ago. It's just I'm like Gary Vee or something. Yeah, yeah this guy wears sneakers. <laughs> the worst part is, is I went back and got shoes at my apartment and then went back to the place, <laughs> which oh. is even more pathetic. Oh, you tried to pretty woman them? Yeah, basically, I came back and with regular shoes, and they're like, all right, you can go. Out. I went to, I paid <laughs> like $50. For I invited KV to the like bar club I was at on Saturday, and he came in shorts <laughs> and didn't get in. And then I like walked around the neighborhood with him looking to buy pants <laughs> late at night for a while. And then I was like, I feel bad, but I'm going to go back without you. <laughs> He's like, that's fine. That happens pretty often. They should start selling their own merch at clubs. 
of that, like that pants. would be smart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, the bouncer should just be wearing 80 pairs of tearaway pants and yeah, rips yeah. one off and hands them to He's like yeah. 20 bucks. It's like yeah. the guy selling umbrellas when it's raining out in the city. It's, yeah. like, it's the guy, it's the bouncer. <laughs> the pants <laughs> salesman. I'm just imagining yeah. and the guy's like, uh, the, the bouncer Coley is like, sorry, no shorts in the club, boss man. And just like, like lifting KB up by his armpits and just moving him away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it says one for Jetski Rudy. Um, I think the the pulling the book thing is so cool. I'm going to give my reasoning as a physiological one. If you're in a room and you see someone pull a book and then a shelf appears and like, or, you know, the sliding door moves, your pupils are going to dilate. Mm-hmm. It's you're, true. you're immediately going to be like, Ooh, yeah. or you're going like, <gasps> to get an erection or you're going to do something like you, there's going to be a, later. There's going to be a physical response. Blood's going to rush all over the place. Whereas like, if I see a jet ski, I'm like, Oh, that's cool. That's a jet ski. And you ride a jet ski, especially though. in the US of A, bro. We're we're spoiled. Mm-hmm. We got a fuck ton of jet skis, dude. We have a surplus of jet skis. We have so many jet skis, man. There are also multiple types of secret doors. I think because like there's the one where you pull it and like it opens up like a door. I don't think that's as cool as the one where it like the bookcase thing goes back and slides out of the way. Yeah, and that mm-hmm. one is way cool. Yeah, like, and also the one you pull the whole wall flips and like, yeah, the whole yeah. room changes. I think that would be third on this list. Yes, yeah. for sure. Yeah, so I think that there's no jet ski on this earth, or at least I haven't seen it, that would make me moan like a <laughs> secret door would. Secret door gets two votes. Oh. Yeah. What would the moan sound like? Yeah. like oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Imagine um, if I was just like, oh. Like you, like a legit moan, yeah. yeah. Sorry, it's a secret door thing. <laughs> Jet skis are, they feel just as unnatural as a room being in a bookshelf. Like, it, there's no reason for us to be flying across the surface of these oceans and lakes. Like, so I think, I don't know. Yeah, jet ski. If you showed a jet ski to someone in like 1900, they'd like burn you for a witch. Yeah. I think you were, you were a psychopath, but like they were all about the doors with, with uh, secret bookcases and all that. Mm hmm. All right. So we're going to go with, uh, sorry, which one did you pick? You picked jet ski. You picked jet ski. All right. We're tied up. I got a tie break. I think that I will go with the rooms based off of Rudy's assessment because I do, I do think that the wonder I would get from a bookcase turning into a door or whatever is way greater than a, any rush I would get from a jet ski, even though a jet ski is way more plausible to ever happen in my life and has happened multiple times versus... Any- You've been on a jet ski multiple times? Well, I've seen, I've seen multiple jet skis. I also have been on jet ski more. All right, Mr. Millionaire over there. <laughs> not my jet skis. Oh, Mr. Not, Mr. Tycoon over definitely here. Not my jet skis. I can promise you that. Are jet skis like gasoline powered or oil powered? Gasoline. Or are they water powered. Gasoline. They're not uh, water powered. No, definitely not. It's like a paddle, paddle boat. <laughs> if they were water you know, powered, that would, the back. That would yeah. be like the greatest invention of all time. Right. So that's what I'm, that would make it extra. A water powered one would be sick, but unfortunately, I don't think that's I mean, kill that guy immediately if they figured out how to replace oh, yes. <laughs> gasoline big, with water. Big boat, they would murder them. There's man. a conspiracy theory out there that some guy in Ohio made a car that was yeah. powered by water and they yeah. fucking decapitated him. Yeah. yeah. They, they was, sure the, was the car they destroyed the EV1 or something? Like the, there was that car that uh, Big Gas just had like demolished because they didn't want in like the, the 90s Pep- or something. Pepsi One is what you're thinking of. Uh, okay. It was one I calorie. Was- it was one pair. Yeah, that was kind of like the same Ow. same circle. Was it uh, DJ Khaled? Did he get lost in the jet skis nonstop? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I was also thinking about this whole show. <laughs> it was a fun, very funny time. That was like peak Snapchat too before it kind of like yeah. went, went off a cliff a little bit. Pepsi coming out with Pepsi One was just like the <laughs> Coke just ultimate prices right at them. Like uh, zero. Yeah. We'll do zero. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do one? I can do you one better. <laughs> <laughs> That's the completely painted in a corner, calling their one calorie. <laughs> That's a great point. There's all right, no so. way they could get all the calories out of it. We know yeah. we've, we've set the bar as low as it can be set. All right, now we have the number 16 seed boobs versus number 8 seed toothpicks. This is, this is going to be a tough one. A real tough one. Owen, toothpicks or boobs? I'm thinking about your cinnamon toothpick guy, and it's making it very hard. I'm thinking about Literally. both of them in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, At the same time, that's dangerous. Nuh-uh. I'd probably go back and forth <laughs> in case I got any of the titty in the teeth. Um, yes. Yeah, no, I mean, toothpicks are cool, but it's got to be titties. One for titties. Rudy. I'm thinking about the sort of where these things register in in someone's life boobs are the boobs are the goal Mm -hmm. 
Boobs are the end game. Toothpicks are just a, a vessel to get there. That's true. They're toothpicks just a, would lead you to, to boobs, but boobs is what you want. Yeah. Right. Toothpicks and using toothpicks are just the pursuit of happiness, whereas yeah. boobs are happiness. Damn. So it's fucking poetic. I have to I have to say boobs because they really are like the Shangri La <laughs> of of life. So boobs. Jay. Mm. Um because we've said that it's just female boobs. Yes. I feel like we gotta go with that just because they're they're good in all aspects. But toothpicks, again, can be used as just a cleaning device for your teeth, in which case is very unsightly. So boobs. Mm -hmm. It's true. Cole, you're going to go the opposite way there for a second. <laughs> boobs. Titties, we're going to move on. It was never in doubt. All right, so who's going to go to the finals of the number 16 seed boobs? <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to fucking get the 12 seed out of here. The, the room in the bookcase, like, like the, the, the secret bookcase door versus boobs. I feel like we can just move boobs on, right? That's a uh, tough one. I don't know about that. All right, if they're going to put to a vote then, Coley. Yeah, there's a, there's a store in Boston called Bodega that looks like a bodega. And then you go to, I believe it was a Snapple machine, and you press one of the buttons, and it's a door, and then it's a very exclusive, like, high-end sneaker store. Hey, have you been there, Rudy? No, but I've, I've been on their online website. Right, yeah. So that's how they started. Um, and that's their a titan of the industry at this point. And it's because of that, because of the secret door and the exclusivity that... Uh, they marketed really genius uh um, exclusivity in general also very cool right yeah that's i mean then to be in one of those kind of doors you have to be exclusive to some level boobs are great boobs are i mean we're we're having a grand old time here just reminiscing on on tits of your but they are there is an abundance of them if if, if we're going to hold abundance against jet skis i'm going to hold them against tits here i mean there are two to every chest. It's true. So I'm, I'm going wrong. People that have had mastectomies, but yes, they uh, they outnumber the the bookcases by oh, a, a huge. What, you, what was that called? A mastectomy? Mastectomy. <laughs> mastectomy. Yeah, right? like when you have breast cancer. I never yeah. heard that. Breast cancer awareness month is October in the NFL. Yeah, sure. We we wear the pink. It always looked, it does look cool. Yeah. All right, Shay. Um. Yeah, I think I agree with Coley. Like, I think the I argued against bookcases, but like boobs again, like. Love boobs, but everybody has them. Like, mm -hmm. so, uh, so the secret yeah. book too. Uh, two for the secret room, Rudy. Um, it's. T I never I thought. I never thought. I, I, <laughs> I never thought in a million years that the thing that might take down boobs is a secret fucking door. Um, but I. Th the thing that's holding me up is the fact that boobs are crucial from the moment you're born to the moment you die. If you show a secret door to a baby, it might get the concept. It might. <laughs> but if you show boobs to a baby, they go nuts. That, you know, baby likey. <laughs> so for the longevity of boobs in terms of the fact that you like them from minute one to minute zero, of your life you think you're going reverse it's like minute like yeah like oh yeah sorry whatever, right yeah. yeah from minute one to minute however many minutes it is that you like boobs so i'm gonna go with boobs all right one for boobs Give babies a lot of credit yeah. like, and they might get a secret door oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> they may well like i mean their favorite game is peekaboo oh that's a good point you're giving <laughs> yourself credit saying you have an abundance of titties yeah. <laughs> yeah. um yeah i don't know if you guys are delegating uh for the sake of the show but yeah uh, pause titties <laughs> titties win so it's now it's titties versus room and i have to tie break two to two damn how many breakers have you had this episode a lot wow. well it's because we have five that's that's, that's that's why um all right tits versus the room i was so, obviously so pro tits a minute ago but i think i've been swayed a little bit just based off of that exclusivity like kind of thing like you can google boobs and get a level of pleasure out of it you can google secret bookcases you don't really get that same thing you need to physically be there with the bookcase and when you witness it, it is so exclusive and so cool that I feel like I need to vote for it here. So I'm going to vote forward the the 12 seed into the finals, uh, the secret room thing. 
whatever you want to call it. Bookies. I wonder if, they, yeah, because there is a ton of boobs compilations on the internet, but I yeah. wonder if there's a secret door <laughs> compilation. I would watch that. For is like, that the only one who wor- voted for titties? No, I no, did. No, no, oh, you did? Both voted for titties, yeah. I don't. <laughs> a couple of fucking old school alphas over here. We Now we have the number three seed, which we subbed out, which is sunglasses to surfing. So it's going to be surfing versus the number 11 seed disarming a bomb at the last second. <laughs> this is going to be a tough one. Disarming a bomb at the last second on a surfboard? I mean... That would be the coolest, probably, but we can't. We're not combining, not in this one anyway. So, surfing versus disarming bombs. The last second. It's a real tough one. Who's it on? It's on own right now. Um, I don't know. I think we're being naive a little bit to think that all surfers are cool. I think we're thinking of the best of the best and like going through tubes. If we're saying those surfers, like mm-hmm. surfing through that but like there's also a lot of people who treat it like skating i'm sure and are like annoying about it um i don't know if there is it's such a like i get what you're saying but i think it's like a different mindset and lifestyle because like i wouldn't say all skaters are like all like snowboarders i know there's crossover for sure but i think there's there's just something different about them surfer culture too specifically is very like i feel like surfer culture like you were saying before cole he's like like poor adjacent, like snowboarding culture is rich as fuck. Like, right. like that's just, there's very different levels of like elitism to that. Um, and skateboarding cul- uh, culture is like somewhere between, I think like surfing is definitely harder, like financially to get into, I think than skateboarding, but like, I feel like they're like, I don't know it is. like the, it's there's, boards are pricey as fuck. Uh, sure. If like, if I were to buy one, I like my dumb ass would end up buying like a $3,000 one somehow. But like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I've, there's just so many people that surf that do not come from any sort of means. I, I, yeah. No, I'm picturing like one town on Long Island. I knew kids from Long Beach. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gilgo, yeah. I don't know. I, it's cooler when they're Hawaiian. It is. For sure. Always. Yeah. Um, they're always tan too. That's very cool. Yeah. Like my brother-in-law is, uh, I think he's now retired, but he was a Brazilian professional surfer. That's like the coolest sentence of words I think I've ever seen. Right. Surfed. And like he lives in Hawaii and he surfs. And <laughs> it's just like, yeah, that's sick. Like there's nothing. I don't even know if I could ever, because of how tall and fat I am, stand up <laughs> on a surf. Like it, I definitely couldn't. No like chance. In the ocean. Yeah. Fuck. Oh, they pull the wetsuit down like halfway. Oh, yeah. The wetsuit too is also so very cool. sick. Sometimes they wear in those shoes like uh, where it's like a molds to your feet, mm-hmm. whatever. That was pretty cool too. The rip cord alone, rip cord, like it's just such a cool word. <sighs> Attached to the ankle and all that. And there's it, like much like the bomb exploding, there is danger yes. around you. Like you got in rip tide, you die. And rip get dying by rip tide, also very cool. Like surfing. Just by term wise, anyway. Surfing. It's one for surfing. Rudy. Surfing has so many good qualities, and I want to vote it, but the only reason I won't is because uh, you can't save anyone's life surfing. People would say you can save your own brother, except except maybe yourself. Many do every day. And which you could also argue that it's someone who's disarming a bomb is only saving themselves. Mm -hmm. But more often than not, they're saving a a baseball stadium. So (laughs) yes, it does seem to be the odds are in the that will be in a baseball stadium. Um. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go disarming a bomb just from the the rarity standpoint. Fair enough, Jay. Um, I was actually able to stand up on a surfboard once when I took a surfing lesson, but I brought I purchased that surfing lesson on Groupon, so I can Ooh. definitely not <laughs> yeah. surfing. Yeah. So d- disarming a bomb is gonna move. It's <laughs> going surfing on Groupon is so funny. <laughs> Groupon does give a lot of weird access to like sneaky cool things. Yes, no, that's correct. It's, yeah, it's very peculiar. What well, is Groupon still a thing? Yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I get emails from them, and I don't unsubscribe because I'm interested to see like what weird shit in my area is happening. Was this in Martha's Vineyard this after the in, scooter incident? Uh, far rockaway or rockaway beach i mm. think oh um but yeah showing up to a serving lesson kind of cool i guess showing up to a surfing lesson with a printed out piece of paper <laughs> saying that you saved ten dollars <laughs> on your lesson not cool at all <laughs> most surfing terms in themselves are also very cool like swell mm. like swells and shit the movie like, oh. johnny tsunami yeah johnny mm. tsunami great movie dude i i went surfing i went <laughs> i had a similar experience i went to a surfing lesson but the slang they used on mm. one of them 
I was in Nantucket and I went to the surfing lesson and we met the instructor on the beach and he like looked out on the water and he goes, yeah, it's pretty micro out there today. So it <laughs> might be kind of tough. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. What does that mean? I, I was like, what did you say? He goes, it's pretty micro. I does was that like, mean that the waves are small? He's like, the waves aren't very big. Oh. And I was like, what, dude? <laughs> <laughs> like of all the people who work at this company, Rudy has the most surfer energy. Yes, for sure. Mm-hmm. I wish I was a surfer. So Same. badly. That's all I've I, like truly ever wanted in this life, and I just know it's not. I don't think you can be an East Coast surfer. I don't. Yeah, I don't it's think true. it works. I, I see those videos of those guys that surf in Lake Superior, and I'm like, I get out of my face. You also need to have a cool name, I think. Like, like you, Kelly like I, uh, Kelly Slater, fucking coolest name in the world. Like, you can't be a Polish surfer. Like, you can't have yeah. a Polish last name being a surfer. Like, even Irish last names, for the most part. Like Kennedy's not a surfer last name. Just I mean, it's unfortunate, but it's true. But like Slater, Slater, shockingly, I had to Google this because of what I just said. Born in Florida, so mm-hmm. want maybe the goat That's from the East Coast. Definitely the one state where I would say it's like an exception to the rule or whatever sure. because of all the sure. storms and shit. Sure, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so Cole, you're up. Surfing versus disarming bombs at the last second. I, I mean, I made my stance clear early. Mm-hmm. You want to disarm bombs with so much time left on the like. Eli Manning, I don't know if it's still true because Tom's still playing, but I know up until very recently, Eli Manning had more fourth quarter comebacks than Tom Brady for their careers. And that's because Tom Brady wins games in the second and third quarter. Much cooler to just be up 21 going into the fourth than have to come back scratch and claw for a win. Um, And again, I've just always had this obsession with, I don't know if it's because I grew up in a cold climate. I don't know if it's because I grew up looking like this. Surfing, the rocket power definitely played a uh, uh, huge role. Yeah, uh, Raymundo, so, man, fucking, that's a great surfer name too. Raymundo from that show. Yeah, surfing is is as cool as it gets. I got so sweet. I have to tie break, and I'm going to vote for surfing because that is there's just no almost no argument against it. every single aspect about surfing is cool. Like there's no single thing about it where it's like, damn, that's a little bit uncool. Like you could think of that with even disarming a bomb. Like like you're like even just using Coley's argument. Um, all right, so next up we have the number two seed smoking cigarettes versus the number seven seed dancing well. Coley, you get to start. Oof. So part of dancing well, I think, uh, as Owen pointed out, we're just thinking of like Chris Brown pretty much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There are people who dance well who, if we take it back to like when you're six, seven, eight years old, it's like, oh, what do you have today? Oh, I got to go to dance class. Loser, yeah, get out of my mm-hmm. face, yep. dude. Yeah. What are you talking about? You're dead. You're doing. There's a whole episode of The Simpsons where Bart has to do ballet as a punishment, and he's really good at it. And he has to go in the school play, do ballet, and he wears a mask because he doesn't want anyone to know. <laughs> um, so dancing, while ha- can be practical, uh, really just in your twenties. After that, you're just doing weddings, and if you're old, you're really just slow dancing, which Truly, everyone who can stand up should be able to do. <laughs> smoking cigarettes is, I mean, if you're surfing and you have a cigarette in, I mean, oh, oh my God, you can cool <laughs> seem to ever exist. The fuck. All right, Jay. Uh, last week we talked about fatsos, and I feel like a lot of fatsos <laughs> smoke cigarettes. <laughs> we did. Um, like, we're all thinking, like, you know, 50s guy with, you know, the white undershirt, like jeans, like smoking a cigarette. That wasn't that, what I was that thinking. That wasn't what I was yeah, thinking. No, at no, all. That was not my uh, first thought of a smoking right, guy. Well, that's what I was thinking about. Um, You're thinking of like a slob? <laughs> yeah, like plenty of disgusting people um, <laughs> smoke cigarettes. So um, for that reason, I feel like if cigarettes are an well, appetite depressant, like yeah. you eat mm. less when you smoke. <laughs> the results that I've that these four eyes have seen uh, <laughs> shows me <laughs> that there are plenty of tubos that are smoking packs a day. Similar uh, line tubos. of thinking to the Donald Trump Diet <laughs> Coke theory. Um, but everyone that dances well, I feel like, um, is like a has a certain gravitational pull about them. Mm. Um, so I'm gonna go with dancing well. So you think fat people can't be cool, is what you've no, <laughs> that's the fat here. people can definitely be cool, but I think if you look at the types of people that do both, I think. The cigarette crowd is filled with way more uggos than uh, <laughs> than the 
the well, good dancer very crowd. Good dancers. I think that uh, specifically too, a fatso dancing is very cool. Like, do you remember that video of the guys? I think they were like uh, Rockets fans or something. Do you remember this? And like, it was these two fat guys, and they did like a cat, catapult sort of deal over each other. It, like this weird little oh, flip yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. That was mm-hmm. sick as hell. Like that. That makes it. If you're an agile fat guy, you're extremely cool in my book. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking of Chris Farley specifically. Yeah, true. Also, that would be like a great example for that. All right, Rudy. I've gone back and forth like three times in the last two minutes. I I saw a video the other day of this soccer player. After the last game of his season, he was sitting on the field with his uniform on, and he's smoking a cigarette and had a beer. And I was like, "Fuck, that's so cool. That's really cool." Um, but then I started thinking about the fact that, like, the phrase "bust a move." It's like, "Oh, that's my friend Reggie, dude. He's fucking sick at dancing. Bust a move." Mm-hmm. And then, like, right then and there, you just bust a move. That's pretty cool. That's like, a hypothetical. When does that ever happen? I know, but I just, <laughs> I'm wishing. I want but like that. Every, like everyone's talking be- about this one dancing friend. Do any of you guys have a dancing friend? I want to be that I have, friend. I have one dancing I know a friend. guy who's really good to yeah. dancing. I'm like, what's his, what's, what's his, his style? Yeah, what's his... He does, he does the thing where you... Uh, you you put your leg oh, through the thing and then hop through. Jump rope not it. cool. Yeah, not cool. Well, I'm just saying like that's one of the moves he does where you can just do it so flawlessly and easily. And I'm just like, what the fuck, you dude? I'm what about? Man. I want to hear about Steven's dancing friend. Uh, I mean, I knew him in like high school. He was a couple of years older, and he just knew like all the cool dance moves. He was actually a little bit of a huskier fellow, but he was like uh, very cool in the fact that he could just like do all those all those things. And it's like this guy, wow, sick. Also, I, let's let's like let's look at the the world. Let's look at technology look at tiktok tiktok is the most powerful mm-hmm. social media platform on the world in the world right now and it's built off the backs of dancers yeah if there was an app where if there was an app where teenagers were just smoking cigarettes for eight <laughs> seconds at a time that would be way cooler i know i'm i'm really on the fence coley's argument about the fact that like as a kid if you go to like dancing practice that is pretty fucking lame I'm look. I'm thinking of this like very hyper specific type of dancing, and I just am so jealous of people that can dance because I have no rhythm. But overall, overarching, it's got to be cigarettes. It's another one for cigarettes, Owen. Uh, cigarettes in a bloodbath. Um, Jax Teller, Tommy Shelby Damn. are the two coolest people that come to mind when I think Don of Draper. To, yeah, Don to Draper. Coley's credit. Um, yeah, cigarettes. Uh, I could go on, but all of the coolest recent characters do smoke. Uh, it is going to move on. I do think dancing to your point, Coley, it does get cooler with age. Like you're, if you're good at it, like let's say you're like the same relative level of goodness at it, you get, it gets better or more interesting or more. Well, it's like a bell curve. Like it's extremely uncool, then super cool. And then it really tails off. Yeah. Like it comes like useless, but still if you're like a, like a 70 year old, that could bust a move or something, people would be like, Oh, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> but like I've singing would be much cooler. Mm. Uh, yeah, yes and no because like you, if you could point at the guy in the bar and be like, "Hey, bust a move," you can't point at him and be like, "Hey, hit a C sharp." Like it just yeah, I mean, doesn't you, have the same. You can though, like at a post game, <laughs> oh. you're in an apartment, like sing. I don't. I just thought of a good one. Freestyling would have been fucking good. I mm. don't. I don't. I don't think I get dancing. I, I no, I think it makes sense because like there is the the guy who can dance well is the guy who gets the most attention in whatever the setting is. Like that is that guy is the coolest. Where where are you guys? Have you seen Step Up? Yeah, Step Up too. I mean, a movie. A star. I'm saying like where in life are you guys like recognizing someone's dance skills on TikTok? Yeah, TikTok a lot. Most of that dancing's bad. Yeah, that's well. The the Subway. most popular TikTokers are the worst dancers, but right? The ones in between, yeah. Or or John Wall coming out for the yeah. Wizards. Yeah. When do you see someone dancing in your life? That's a great point. Showtime, Showtime on the subway. Mm-hmm. Like that's well, those actually are, really annoying. That's yes. okay, but that's annoying. But the stuff they do is crazy, like insanely that's acrobatic true, yeah. and cool. No, that's true. <laughs> but if you were, but like if you were at like a nightclub and I see people at nightclubs all the time, and like everyone, like everyone that isn't dancing, I think wish they could. Yes, definitely. I think it's more a mental block than anything. It I totally like you're a fine dancer, Rudy. A block is a block, though. I don't, I don't, I don't know if people even dance at cl- like you move. Nobody's like doing choreographed like anything but that you could flex when you're me, out. Let me throw because I know you love hypotheticals in these. Let me throw a hypothetical at you. There's a guy dancing in a circle. All the people around him are going, "Ho, ho, 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 ho!" Like everyone's like chanting in unison for this guy as he busts a move. Is he not the coolest guy in the room? And maybe even the zip code. <laughs> he could be the coolest guy in the room but that's not a cool room if we're surrounding a man chanting to dance <laughs> you know you're chanting with him while he dances 
I suppose it's a tough one. Dance circles. All right, it, now that hypothetical. Now picture just anybody smoking. No, a you're right. I'm with you. I'm voting for smoking here. That was I would have voted for it regardless. I think, I think smoking yeah. deserves to win. Yeah, for sure. So now it's gonna be smoking versus surfing, which is that's a bloodbath. Oh, oh my god. god, that is such a difficult matchup. Um, and we're gonna start with you this time, Owen. Smoking or surfing? Fuck. Is this the championship? No, this is okay. just our Western Conference Finals. Whoever wins this goes up against the room with the bookcase. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just so funny every time I say it. <laughs> Smoking versus surfing. Fuck, this is tough. This is a really hard one. This honestly could be the finals. I'm just going back and forth with like our exclusivity arguments, whether that makes it cooler, because less people surf, obviously. Mm-hmm. You can buy a cigarette from a uh, pack of cigarettes from a vending machine. I don't know if anymore. But you definitely used to. Certainly not them. anymore. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say I haven't seen that in a very long time. They have them in some uh, casinos. 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 Yeah. yeah. Although that's another thing that sucks being in a casino because all you can smell is cigarettes. That's smoke, my that's favorite smell. You like the smell of like the just the cigarettes soaked into a carpet. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, I hate Bowling that alleys, smell. casinos, distinct. Smell, yeah. Oh, oh, we've talked cool. about this. It's love both of it. our favorites because yes. I mean, it's all the coolest places have the smell, <laughs> and it associates with a lot of <laughs> fun memories. It's it's shitty bars, casinos. Like yep. said. Yeah. Uh, it's a tough one, smoking or surfing. Again, if you're smoking while you're surfing, it would be that would be the winner here. That'd be hard too because you have to be keeping the cigarette. Uh, I'll go smoking. I don't even have thoughts. This is Sean Form thoughts. I don't have thoughts. This is such a tough one, Rudy. Um, it is a very difficult one. I think uh, the situation that I keep thinking about is if your girlfriend or the girl you're dating was talking to her mom or her, some one of her friends about you. She's like, "What does he do?" <laughs> she's like, "He's a surfer." It's like, oh, you know, <laughs> like that's nice. Whereas, like, what's she gonna say? Like, oh, he's a smoker. <laughs> yeah, that's all you got. Yeah, yeah. it's like if you like there's so much more of a there's so much more depth to surfing in terms of the lifestyle mm-hmm. and the where the places you live and your and your outlook on life, your connection to the natural world, the danger of sharks. Granted, if you are a smoker, you are swimming with cancer, so that's mm-hmm. probably more dangerous to be honest with you. So, it's a tough one. It's a heavyweight matchup, but I think in terms of uh the lifestyle and how much goes along with it? I think it's got to be surfing. That's such a goddamn hard one. I, it's like there's, but again, I'm going with your argument of like the surfers are just like that. That is just so cool. Like you immediately think that person's cool no matter what. Also, the word surfing itself, it's great, extremely cool. No, it's another you know, unintentionally great word. Chain smoking, like chain smoking, <laughs> sounds cool as fuck, and it's very Sick. bad. Uh, chain smokers, chain smokers, mm. yeah, eh, eh, equivalently as cool. Sure, Jay surfing. Uh, I just think 100% of people that surf are cool. Mm-hmm. I can't think of a lame surfer. Like, lots of lame smokers. Not a lot of lame surfers. Coley. We've talked a lot about surfing and haven't even brought up Max B yet. Which oh, I think damn. Is that uh, a famous surfer? The, <laughs> yes. I think he swags. Yeah, surfs. yeah he's, yeah. he's <laughs> the silver. He, uh, silver? The, he surfs he the, the silver surfboard. Surf yeah. <laughs> He is. Um, <clears throat> there was when the life of Pablo was coming out, Kanye was talking about waves a lot and it caused such a stir that he wasn't giving credit. I believe Wiz Khalifa was one who brought it to attention uh, that he was not properly crediting Max B uh, <laughs> being the wave God himself to the point where Kanye had to call Max B from prison uh, <laughs> to give him his blessing to use the phrase wave on his album. Uh, which is still so that's something we should be talking about more in day to day life, uh, for my liking. Is Max B an artist or a surfer or both? He's a surfer, he's he's definitely a surfer. I don't see color. Um, <laughs> <laughs> also, a great that was a great uh, early PMT bit. No, was a uh, shout out Max B, or yeah, was that uh, yes, uh, yeah. because of uh, Portnoy, Portnoy's, yeah, Portnoy's dad. Uh, grandson, yes, grandson, that's right, yeah, um, nephew, grand, yeah, grandson, yeah, um. But yeah, it's I've I've long uh, been envious of the in, the entirety of surfing, everything that goes about it. All right, so you get to vote first in our finale. Uh, it's surfers versus 
the secret door <laughs> uh, in the in the bookcase. <laughs> so it's it's it it's really two opposite ends of the spectrum because like a lot of great surfers truly have nothing. Like there's the most successful you can be is Kelly Slater. And I don't know what his net worth is. I'm sure he's had some nice brand deals, but like compared to other athletes, they're making nothing. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. like the most successful surfer is still moderately successful in comparison to other things. If you have a secret door, you cannot be a poor person. There's just no fucking way. Like you live in a castle of some sort. Um, So it really is two, two sides of the same coin. Um, and in situations like this, I'm never going to side with the with the elites. I'm going to side <laughs> with the poor. I have to go surfing. Like if you need so many things to get to that door, you really just need the ocean and and a wave for for surfing. I'm going surfing. <laughs> Into the to your argument about the famous surfers, Kelly Slater is the most famous surfer. The only other one I could think of is the one that got famous because her arm got bit off. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. Yeah. That's the only other way you can get famous. She was the sole surfer. Is by getting mauled. Like, yeah. It's yeah. like Hawaii and Australia are the two places I think most of with um, surfing. And those are like objectively the two coolest places we have as a planet. It's a great, great point. All right. Jay, surfing versus secret bookcase door. I think Coley outlined it pretty well. Um, in the fact that, you know, one is, um, very elitist and, uh, the other one is open for anyone. Um, in those situations, I'm always going to side with the elitist cause that's way cooler. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go with, uh, the, the secret. <laughs> I love that setup. <laughs> oh, what a great delivery. Uh, Rudy. Um, I'm going to go with. I mean, I, I'm hung up on the fact that it's such a good invention, the the secret bookshelf, because I'm thinking about the first guy. It's like, dude, what if we put a fucking door right there? Mm-hmm. That's a pretty Im- remarkable invention that has stood the test of time. But then you can make the same argument for surfing. I mean, that's an invention. Uh, so I'm torn. The only reason I want to pick surfing is because of the culture that surrounds it, the hot chicks, the sunshine, the the beach blonde hair. I mean, everything about it is just so cool. So, didn't you bring up the bookshelf thing with like being sex parties? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> which is true. Like, the first guy who looked at the ocean was like, you know what? I'm gonna go stand on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sick. And I think uh, you know, when in moments of doubt, we we should look to we should look to God. Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. We should look to God. And I think that if you were to ask God, which one of these two things do you look more fondly upon? Which one is more dank? He would say surfing. Mm. I would agree you, you with could you. Argue, you could argue <laughs> Jesus removing the rock from the yeah. This was <laughs> the original <laughs> the gag door. You, you know what oh, I know? Jesus, and to, to the, the gag door's credit, Jesus was a carpenter. He probably loves those things. That's true. I almost put the resurrection as one of my <laughs> The things. resurrection of Christ as one of the coolest moves. And Jesus yeah. defied surfing. He would just part the sea instead. Yeah. He was the anti-surf. He walked. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Owen. Uh, yeah, I agree with Che. I think just people, elite people are cool. Uh, we could try and convince ourselves that they're not to make ourselves feel better. But if you're going elite or poor, you're going to go elite. So I'll do uh, being on Epstein's flight logs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll do surfing as well. All right, surfing is going to win our cool bracket. Um, I feel like the second you added that, Coley, that was like the shoe in to be the winner mm-hmm. i'm shocked none of us had it on our list before because it is fuck it's just the coolest thing god damn bonafide it cool yeah it's it's just bona fide cool it really is. um all right we'll be back next week and next week we will be doing the bracket of bracket winners we'll have the full crew back for that that's episode be, 30 that'll be episode 30 so we're going to be doing 30 bra- or i guess 29 30 bracket 30. winners so yeah we'll be even though we're technically going to have, maybe I'll pick one of our ones where uh, we had like a, a closer matchup, and I'll add another one in. But I think we'll do. It. There should be three Cheyenne games, so it's like a crisp thirty-two. Yeah, could do that. We could do three season Cheyennes. Um, okay, so we'll be back with that. That's going to be like a hyper episode with the full, all the group back. Uh, but until then, for, remember if you're watching on YouTube to so subscribe, get our numbers up. Uh, until then, from me, Coley, Che, Rudy, and from Owen, we will see you next time.